happy to be here to celebrate with you the International Post Postal Cleanup Summit, sponsored by Lighthouse, Legacy Foundation, and Coca-Cola. And I want to thank our host for this uh, summit entitled Youth Empowerment for our Environment. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge our Congressman from the 1st District of Zambales, uh, Congressman Jeffrey Pongo. And the Mayor of Olongapa City, Mayor Roland Paulino. And uh, at our OIC of Olongapa City, Luchi Limpoman. And the Mayor of Subic, Zambales, uh, Mayor Jay Kongho. The Chairman of the Lighthouse Legacy Foundation, Mr. Jesus Abisilia Jr. And the President and GM of Coca-Cola Philippines, Win Everhart. And the Vice President for Public Affairs, Coca-Cola Philippines, Jonah Delume. The CSR Specialist, Co-Founder of Change Makers International, International Organization, Nick Swartel. And the President of the Philippine Alliance for Recycling and Material Sustainability, Mr. Chris Lau. And the Vice President of Farms, Mr. Bert Ibarra. And uh, representing the SBMA Director, Cynthia Paulino. And the manager of the Ecology Center of SPMA, Amen Dia de la Llana. And the Strategic Director, National Cash Match Council, uh, Jesse Pascasio. And of course, all the speakers of our 2018 Youth Environmental Summit, the participants, palakpakakbo natin ang mga participants and the local government officials who are here, palakpakakbo natin sila and the international close-up coastal cleanup summit organizers and staff, palakpakakbo and our friends from India, palakpakakbo natin, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you very much for inviting me to celebrate with you the International Coastal Cleanup Day uh, Symposium. Tapos na pala yung day. It is important that besides all the cleanup activities we do here in the country and our counterparts in other countries, the organizers, volunteers, and all participants will also take time to assess the efforts exerted, review its impact, as well as its effectiveness. That will ensure the success of future activities and action. Thus, the summit provides a really good venue for that, for everyone involved to discuss and dialogue. In doing so, as you have pointed, find more efficient solutions to ensure that the cleanliness of our beaches continue far beyond the cleanup activity. Cleanup activities are of course the main platform of ICC at nagiging mas lalo pang nagiging importante in recent years given the state of our environment and the extreme weather disturbances we are experiencing. As you know, the main event of ICC organized by DNR on ICC Day itself, which was supposed to be on the 3rd of Saturday of September every year. Uh, this year, it's September 15th, was moved because of Typhoon Ompo. At saka sagsagan ng bagyong Ompo na nakita na naman natin sa news ang matinding pagbaha sa iba't ibang parte ng bansa, lalo na sa Metro Manila, at pati na rin sa Central and Northern Luzon. Naging center of att attention uli 
ang napakalaking amount of garbage sa Manila Bay na inanod sa Rojas Boulevard. The extreme flooding and storms that we experience whenever there are typhoons are important reminders to all of us that our jobs are never really done. Uh, sabi nila, uh, sabi ko, when you clean up rivers and lakes, it's a permanent job. It's a job forever. You cannot clean today and not clean tomorrow. It's a maintenance job. We need to even step up all our efforts. Parang in kahit araw-araw o weekly or regular ang ating clean up activities, parang hindi na umuubos ang basura. I remember in Manila Bay, in our uh, Las Piñas Parañaque Wetland Park, and in Paseco, we used to clean once a month. But we were not making any progress. It's still the same. Then we started cleaning once a week. I asked the Secretary of Education to instruct our superintendents of both Paranaque and Las Piñas to require the high school students to come to our wetland every Friday morning to clean. But it's not even enough. So the next step was to ask the Department of Public Works and Highways and the Metro Manila Development Authority to come every day. So when they started cleaning every day, that's when we uh, remove all the garbage in our Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park and in Paseco. So we have to do it every day. I'm glad that when the Supreme Court issued the mandamus, continuing mandamus to clean Manila Bay, they instructed 13 government agencies to do it. And of course, included on ang Department of Public Works and Highways, Metro Manila Development Authority, and Department of Education, and Department of Health. And of course, kasali ang DA, the Bureau of Soil and Water Management, and the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. And uh, kaya, pag tinatawag ko sila to do their job, they cannot refuse me because I tell them I will report you to the Supreme Court that you are not doing your work as mandamus agencies. Hindi naman talaga mauubos ang basura dahil we all create waste and garbage every day. It is the proper disposal of the garbage we generate to be the key. At dapat na matapos na pagtatapo ng basura kung saan-saan para maubos na rin ang mga basurang nakakarating sa mga dagat, ilog at nagbabara sa ating mga waterways. Dahil ang mga iyon ang problema at nagpopolyon ng ating environment at katulad ng tema, the theme of the International Coastal Cleanup Day in our country, ang solusyon ng polusyon ay tayo. The solution of our pollution is us. We are the cause, but we are also the solution to pollution. And our job in cleaning up our surrounding can only be done or finished when people become disciplined enough to properly dispose their garbage and help in waste management of their communities and cities. Yes, the Philippines ranked number one last year among the participating countries in the international coastal cleanup in terms of the number of volunteers. I think it's 244,000 last year. But we also ranked third next to China and Indonesia among 192 countries serving in terms of volume of plastic waste 
produced by the population that could potentially enter the seas and ocean. That is based on a University of Georgia study. So the number of Filipino volunteers will surely be outnumbered or outweighed by plastic littering our waters and coastline. That brings us to the importance of making sure that our efforts and action will bring about more permanent solution to our problem. That is really what we have to focus on together. Rest assured na itutuloy ko rin ang pagsulong ng mga environmental protection and pres preservation through laws and measures that will ensure strict waste management, pollution prevention, at iba pa in my capacity as the chairman of the Senate Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. I'm working on amending the 17-year-old Ecological Solid Waste Management Law or Republic Act number 9003. It was passed by Congress in 2001. I remember my husband was then Speaker of the House of Representatives and he talked to the chairman of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources that we have to do it for our children. So better pass the law. I think it's the clean, uh, it's the solid waste management law, the Clean Water Act, and the Clean Air Act. So ito po. Pero after 17 years, it was a landmark legislation, but after 17 years, we are still in the same state as before. Majority of the environmental and ecological problems and challenges that our country are encountering and contending with would have not happened or would have been solved earlier. RA 9003 aims to provide solid waste management programs and mechanisms to ultimately ensure the protect, protection of public health and environment. It clearly enumerated what are required of us from the household, from business establishment, from local government units, from segregation, recycling, composting, mandatory solid waste diversion, among others. In particular, our local government units were required to submit a 10-year solid waste management plan, segregation of waste at source, establishment of material recovery facility or what we call MRF, and solid waste facility for final disposal among others. And according to our National Solid Waste Management Commission, there was high compliance rate among cities and municipalities, but we continue to strictly monitor their compliance as there are also assertions that the report may not be accurate. The law promotes environmental awareness and action among citizens, requires greater private sector and public participation. I would also like to make manufacturers that produce products that end up as plastic trash more accountable. We would like to pattern the amendment in our law after the so-called extended producer responsibility concept practiced by European countries that mandates manufacturers to recover plastic waste through buyback or recycling program. There should be a shared responsibility among us when it comes to waste management. I filed Senate Resolution 329 that directed the Senate Committee on Environment and Natural Resources to conduct an inquiry on the measures being undertaken, if any, 
to arrest the Philippines' prevalent plastic waste leakage into the seas. Nagkuntap na nga kami ng Senate hearing, and as I cited earlier, kinausap ko na ang malalaking consumer product companies, the big users of plastic, to join the government effort towards environmental protection. Ang United Nations mismo ay tinawag ng planetary crisis ang damage caused by plastic waste. Noong December last year, nag-drop ang UN ang resolution signed by 193 countries to eliminate plastic pollution in the sea. According to the United Nations Environmental Program, 8 million tons of plastic waste are dumped in the ocean every year. At ang mga ito ang pumapatay ng marine life. And the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization said that according to studies, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. And the fish will eat all the plastic and there will be no more fish in the ocean in 2050. So sana hindi mangyari itong prediction na to. And it's going there. Pag nire-review namin yung performance ng ating fishery sector, 20 years ago, the share of fish in the ocean relative to the share of aquaculture it's 70% fish from the ocean, 30% from aquaculture. Today, it's 50-50. 50% from the ocean and 50% from aquaculture. And they predict that by 2022, which is something like six years from now, the share would be 30% from the ocean and 70% from aquaculture. Nagpaligtad na. And then they said that in 2050, 100% na are from aquaculture and there will be no more fish in the ocean. And that will destroy the livelihood of our one and a half million small fisher folks in the municipal water. At may problema tayo sa ating food security. We need to urgently, kasi ang nasa gitna na tayo ng crisis, marami na sa ibang bansa ang may ginawang mga aksyon. Isang halimbawa ang pagbaban ng mga plastic straws sa mga restaurants. Pati mga hygiene products like toothpaste and liquid soap na may plastic pits ay pinagbabawal na rin sa maraming bansa. Alam nyo naman na taon-taon, when we sort the trash we have collected during the International Coastal Cleanup Day, ang mga plastic items comprise the bulk of the garbage we collected. Sabi po na uh, DNR, ang waste po natin, 50% are biodegradable. They are the kitchen waste, the garden waste, the waste coconut has, yung pong natutunaw na wawala after a while. And 15% are paper. And then another 15% are plastic to make a total of 80. And then 20% po yung miscellaneous. Usually, we can recycle the biodegradable through composting. And then we recycle the paper by selling them to the junk shop. Because uh, there is a company here in Pampanga that produces uh, newsprint out of waste paper. And sabi nila nag-i-import pa daw sila ng waste paper. The one we recover from the Philippines is not even enough. Maybe because there is no consciousness on the part of the population 
to send their waste paper to the junk shop. Okay. And then yung plastic, of course, hindi yan ang tutunaw kahit isang daan taon, then we really have to recycle. That's why the, the Association of Plastic Manufacturers are here because they are building a recycling, a recycling plant for plastic and Coca-Cola also is building a recycling plant for plastic. Ako po, nagtayo po ako sa Las Piñas, sa Iloilo, and Cagayan de Oro City ng tatlong factory that recycle plastic waste into school chairs. And yung mga school chairs na yan ang pinamimigay namin sa ating mga public school dito sa Pilipinas. So we will definitely propose similar forms of actions to be implemented in our country in terms of banning or controlling the use of such waste. Meron naman pong government efforts to solve the problem. Katulad po ng Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, they have this program na what they call MMK, Masagana at Malinis na Karagatan. So for those who are with LGUs, uh, they give a prize every year for the pinakamasagana at malinis na kagaragatan. The first prize is 30 million. The second prize is 18 million. And the third prize is 10 million. And there is a 5 million prize for every regional winners in the 18 regions of the Philippines. Kaya lang, hindi po alam ng mga local government. Kaya hindi sila nagpamahusay. Kaya sabi ko doon sa DAB FAR, you have to promote. Because if they know that you're going to give 30 million, 18 million, 10 million, and 5 million for every region, I'm sure, many of our local government will participate. So we're promoting now the program here along Manila Bay. We're going around all the provinces and all the cities along Manila Bay to promote the project. You know, the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Soil and Water Management, namibigay po sila ng composters para i-compost nyo yung inyong kitchen and garden waste. Ang halaga po na isang composter is 500,000. Eh, susulat lang kayo sa akin. Provided you are an organization, you are a cooperative, or you are a local government, I will forward your request letter to the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Soil and Water Management. And maghihintay lang kayo siguro na isang taon bibigyan kayo ng libre composter. Okay? And the uh, PA, Department of Agriculture, uh, Philippine uh, Coconut Administration, nagbibigay din po sila ng decorticating machine. You know, you don't have to be a coconut producing LGU to need this. Kami po sa Las Piñas, wala namang coconut tree sa amin. Kaya lang pagkadami-dami nilang kumain ng coconut. And we have 40,000 waste coconut husks a day. That's why we have a six factories processing waste coconut husks into GUNEP. Alam nyo yung GUNEP that is being used by the Department of Public Works and Highways to, to for soil, uh, what do you mean? Slow protection. And then yung coconut naman, kasi yung co waste coconut has, nagdi-divide po, meron nagiging pit at magiging fiber. Yung fiber, nagiging coconut. Yung pit, nagiging charcoal. Kaya libre charcoal po. Magandang charcoal kasi it comes from the bow of the coconut has. So may coco oil. Kaya mainit. Magandang charcoal. And then the DNR. 
meron silang programa that will give plastic waste recycling factory to all the provinces surrounding Manila Bay, Bataan, Bulacan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, uh, Havite, Laguna, and uh, Rizal, and all the cities of Metro Manila. They will give, and we're still waiting. And of course, they will give composters to all the 178 LGUs around Manila Bay. Having said all of that, there should really be self-regulation among waste generators, which are basically all of us, since we all generate waste. Like in other countries, Filipinos are familiar with various ways on how to reduce, reuse, and recycle solid waste, and even upcycle them, as is the trend nowadays. But we need to apply what we already know and change our lifestyle or way of living. For an action or campaign to be successful, kailangan talaga ang concerted efforts, commitment, at involvement ng lahat ng tao. So yan ang hangat natin na lalo pa tayong maging pursigido at aktibo sa ating mga efforts and actions for the environment. It is a win-win situation because what we do for the environment is the reward in itself. Because those are the investment for the future. Where the returns are great, the returns are our very own health, safety, survival, and our food security. Kaya yung ginagawa natin, kala nyo, wala naman yung silpe, but that is for our food security. First, if we take care of not allowing plastic to go to the ocean, then we will ensure that we will have enough supply of fish to eat in the future. If we compost all our waste, 38% of the soil in the Philippines are degraded. And we ask the UN, United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, and how do you solve the degradation of the soil? Because if your soil are degraded, then there will be no crops to grow. And they said, compost all your waste and bring them back to the soil. So when we compost and we recycle our plastic, we are promoting the food security of our country. Kaya pag nagbo-volunteer kayo for the environment, don't ever think that it is useless. It is really promoting that we will have enough food to eat in the next generation. Alam nyo, kami po, matatanda na kami, mamamatay kami. I noticed that maraming participants dito ang mga bata. It is for you, not for us. It will not happen in our generation, but it will truly happen in your generation. So when you help in preserving your environment, then you're helping yourself so that your future will not bring you any problem in terms of food security. You love po. Marami pong salamat.